The Gene Stealer Cult Neophytes may actually be the best unit that we have in our entire roster. They can fulfill any battlefield role. You want to hold primary objectives? Go to Neophytes. You want to do secondary objective actions? Go to Neophytes. You want to do damage? Actually, we have Neophytes. You want to just flood the board and be really annoying to get rid of? Oh look, Neophytes. So let's look at those four different roles in reverse. They're really difficult to get rid of and keep coming back because of our special rule, Cult Ambush. Whenever a Neophyte unit is destroyed, other Gene Stealer Cult units come back on a 4+. Plus. Neophyte units always come back. We get plus 3 because they're battle line, so we're always getting them back as a blip. So they are a unit that just keeps coming back and back. They will be missing a turn when they do that, unless you manage to get them destroyed in your own combat phase. But they always return in the enemy's reinforcement step, right at the end. So they're going to be a very effective unit for just flooding the board with troops. And we can have up to six of these units. So that could be 120 neophytes if you so wished. They're very tough to remove because we have the cult icon. The cult icon means that we're basically running a unit of Necron Warriors. Though without the toughness and the save and stuff. Necron Warriors get to come back in the command phase. Well, all Necron units get to regenerate in their command phase. The cult icon is a war gear ability that lets our unit return some models in the reinforcement step of the movement phase. It's three models. Alternatively, if we are on an objective and we want to have this unit on an objective to do those primary and secondary mission shenanigan things. I, did, I mean shenanigans, it's scoring victory points the way you win the game. Then you can have D3 plus three models back. So that can be a unit that the enemy is just putting firepower into again and again and it's not going down. With the rise of tanks and the way that tanks and vehicles have become a lot more difficult to shift because you need really dedicated anti-tank firepower, a lot of people are bringing heavy guns, which is very ineffective at killing neophytes. So, since the enemies are not taking a lot of anti-infantry firepower, part of the reason that Gene Steel Cult are doing so well, we can just have a lot of bodies and oh, a LAS cannon killed one of them. Don't worry, they'll get back up. So they're a very tough unit to be on objectives. That is where you want to have them, but you can also use them as damage dealers. They have deep strike, as do the vast majority of Gene Steel Cult units, so they can end up being anywhere, rules permitted. And having 20 neophytes pop up with a large array of weapons and the Ascension Day special rule that gives sustained hits and ignores cover, that's a lot of anti-infantry firepower. That's going to be clearing most objectives. Unless for some reason the enemy has planted a tank on the objective, it could happen. But then you don't throw your neophytes against them, usually. We do have some weapons that can help. So in a unit of 20, you will have... 10 neophytes with the hybrid firearms, which is the mix of shotguns and auto guns that we're used to. And in that squad of 20, you will have one with the cult icon and a hybrid firearm. You can have a leader who can have a leader pistol. Now, that does not replace his existing auto pistol, which all of the models have. Do remember that your neophytes have auto pistols, so you can be firing them if you're in close combat in your own shooting phase. But your leader can fire their leader pistol and an auto pistol. You're not able to have the auto gun and special close combat weapon anymore. Like the power weapon. Power pick and power maul have been combined together to just be a power weapon. Unfortunately only one attack, but you're not taking this unit for its close combat abilities. Then in that unit of 20, we can also have four special weapons, as we term them, as they've been in previous editions. So that's equipment like grenade launchers, flamers, and webbers. And I like all three. All three are good in any combination. The webbers are nice if you want to just do devastating wounds to literally anything. It does rely on you rolling a six, but you do get a lot of auto hits anyway. The flamers again have torrent, so they're auto hitting at the same time and more likely to be wounding on fours and fives against most targets. And grenade launchers are nice if the enemy has a lot of infantry. Then the blast keyword comes into play and you're getting D3 plus a bunch of shots. Very nice if you're on a home objective because of the range, but also the flamers and the webbers are very nice on a home objective because then you can do overwatch. So if some Dark Eldar Scourges drop out and are going to blow away your neophytes with their actually dedicated anti-infantry firepower, you can first fire your flamers and your web guns and murder them. Well-cooked and web-trapped Drukhari are not going to be able to fire their guns. You may have personal preference for these special weapons. Leave it in the comments how you equip your neophytes. I say all of them are good, and that is rare in this edition. Heavy weapon, Again, quite good choices all round. For every 10 models in the squad, you can have two of these, and you can double up or quadruple up because there's no limit, unlike with the Imperial Guard, on how many of the same special or heavy weapon you can take, even though our box set comes with one of each for every squad of 10. Ah oh, well, 
let's enjoy it while we can. I do like all three of the guns. Heavy Stubber's getting six shots when you're coming out from Deep Strike, because then you're going to be at half range, and that is hitting on a 4+. plus. It doesn't have the heavy keyword, it just always hits on a 4+, plus with either three or six shots. And when most of our guns in that squad are strength 3, having something strength 4 is not to be sniffed at, and at that range, it's very nice for holding a back objective and still committing anti-infantry fire. But I see that more likely people will go for the mining laser, that is probably better if you're holding a home objective because then you're going to be staying still and then heavy kicks in and then you're hitting on a 4 plus rather than a 5 plus and it is just a las cannon with half the range. So we do have las cannons of our own, they're just not as good as the las cannons you can get from Brood Brothers. And if you are coming out from deep strike to do damage, you're probably going to be wanting as many seismic cannons as you can fit. That is the best fit heavy weapon for them. Yes, it's a heavy weapon, so coming out from deep strike, you count as having moved, but you're getting six shots at half range. And strength six minus one D3 damage, you can be stripping away tank armor with that. And if you're not facing a tank, if you're facing, oh, I don't know, Chaos Space Marines, Space Marines, something that's got multiple wounds, D3 damage is more likely to kill them in one go. So seismic cannons, really good choice for a heavy weapon. But all of them, for anything, are good. Again, you may disagree. Comment section. That's where we can give advice to fellow Gene Steeler Cult players who are building their Neophyte hybrids for the first time. So let's say we had four flamers, four seismic cannons, and the rest. With Ascension Day giving us sustained hits, we're looking at about 21 hits with our rapid fire hybrid auto guns, 12 seismic cannon hits, and about 14 flamer hits. And these are all ignoring cover. That is a lot of anti-infantry firepower. And we can make it even better to threaten heavy infantry and tanks. If you fire the Achilles Ridge Runner at the target first, then the crossfire rule kicks in. You remember the crossfire rule from 9th edition? Well, this is totally different and much easier to understand, thank goodness. It gives anything else shooting that target unit an extra minus one AP. So now even our hybrid firearms and our leader pistols and flamers are at minus one AP. You see how we're doing quite a lot of damage without even resorting to the Acolytes and their demolition charges, though, you know, you probably do want to go with Acolytes of Demolition Chargers to do a really big boom. But this is another utility of a very versatile Neophyte hybrid unit. And if it's an enemy unit that you really, really need to destroy, then we have the perfect ambush. So in addition to ignores cover, sustained hits, minus one AP on all guns, now we're also adding an extra ballistic skill and increasing the armor penetration by a further one. You see now how your hybrid firearms are hitting on threes at minus two AP. That's more likely to be doing some damage and against something like Imperial Guard, it's just stripping away their entire save. 20 neophytes can pretty easily kill 20 guardsmen holding an objective, unless it's the infantry squad kind, because then they get an extra plus one to their save while they're holding an objective. But again, I think we'll be okay. If we're going to go this route of doing a lot of damage, which characters do we want to add to the unit? Not a Clamavus. Not a Clamavus. How about a Primus? Now at this point I think we're doing enough damage to kill any infantry squad, or maybe two infantry squads, in the game. But if you wanted, as a cult demagogue the Primus can provide full rerolls to hit. Personally I think he's better off with the Acolytes throwing many many demolition charges. Because their demolition charges hit on 5+, plus, that's where you want the rerolls. It is nice on things like the mining lasers and the seismic cannons, but I would push the Primus towards the Acolytes rather than the Neophytes. If you have multiple Primus, Primuses, we used to only be able to take one under the rule of Genesec, that is no longer a rule, you can take as many Primus as you like, up to the maximum three that any unit is limited to that isn't battle line, as per the main rules. You could go a bit more weird and have a Locus if you wanted to give the unit fight first, but you don't want to give the unit fight first because they have terrible combat ability even if they did fight first. You could have a Magos, but that's more of a defensive character, giving a 5 plus feel no pain only against psychic attacks and turning off the shooting potentially of an enemy unit that's going to fire at them, but we have the ability to regenerate our models, so we're not particularly needing that. We'll just take the damage and not spend the points on a character that might stop an enemy unit from shooting. We also don't want a Biophagus because that gives lethal hits to melee weapons only. And while the Acolyte Icon War does give us a flat feel no pain of five plus, if we're going the attack mode and coming out from deep strike, we should just be relying on the number of bodies we have to keep going. Or if we kill everything that's nearby, then we have the stratagem Return to the Shadows. It lets you take the unit off the board at the end of the enemy's turn and then deep strike them again in your turn. Or just let them all die and then we'll return as a blip. The best character I think to put them with 
if they're going this deep strike murder route, is the Nexus. He's very useful for being able to shift blips around and correct a mistake of blips of them being too far away or too close to the enemy before they move. And if you're focusing on that ability, then having him in a small unit holding a home objective is a good idea. Rather than cult infiltration, I would focus on the ability Battlefield Analysis. Once per turn, you get a stratagem for free, even if it's already been used by another unit. Very important, that second part. So if your unit has destroyed everything nearby and is on the wrong side of the battlefield, there we go. Free stratagem to return at the shadows. If the enemy is about to shoot you and you did want to survive, we have a stratagem for that and become one with darkness, making us either untargetable or giving the stealth ability, which means enemies are at minus one to hit. If you needed to come up really close onto an objective because the enemy has left a little bit of a gap that we can fit some models on, tunnel crawlers, then we're three inches away. If you want that perfect ambush, as I've mentioned, that can be made free. And because you can use it even if you've already selected a model or unit from your army as the target of that stratagem already this phase, you can have done this with the acolytes with demolition charges and had them appear three inches away. Had them use the perfect ambush to get additional ballistic skill and armor penetration on their otherwise five plus hitting demolition charges. The Nexus is really important for letting the army work. The wording on it is a little bit ambiguous and I've seen alternate interpretations of it. Now, if you compare it to other character abilities that specify more clearly that the unit that the character is in can use a stratagem for free, we have instead here a dangling participle. Oh, Games Workshop on your dangling participles. Perhaps it needs an FAQ, but I think we're okay. It just depends how you interpret it. Is it, you can select one unit using this ability, so that would be a unit anywhere on the board, or is it, you are selecting a unit that includes a model that has this ability, and then you get the stratagem for zero command points. Rather than it being, we're using this ability to select any unit, I think we're selecting a unit with this ability. I know the wording is different to like the Chaos Lord, but I think they're intended to be the same. So you can't just have a Nexus way back on your home objective with like 10 neophytes sitting there flicking blips around on his table. He has to actually be in the unit that you're gonna use that free stratagem on. It's a very versatile unit. Nexus is one of the best characters. While I'm not going to do a video on the Nexus by itself, the Nexus also works really well for Acolytes, which is one of the other units it can join. We'll not mention Metamorphs for now, unless their points greatly change compared to the Acolytes. And if you did want a big murder ball of Neophytes or Acolytes, the Nexus can be included in the same unit with a Primus. That is a versatile killing ball. And we do love rolling them at the enemy. So that large unit of 20 Neophytes with a Nexus and or Primus, but certainly the Nexus, is what you want for killing the enemy infantry and clearing away enemy objectives. The final way to use Neophyte hybrids is to have them in a unit of 10, maybe 20, holding the home objectives and moving up to any midfield objectives in squads of 10 as a second wave or just deep striking once an objective is secure. Though the Eldar Guardians may get their fate dice, the Battle Sisters may get their miracle dice, we have a plan generations in the making. And for each objective marker that we control with Neophyte hybrids on it, on a four plus, you get a command point. So really, we don't even need the Nexus. We do need the Nexus for that multiple use of the same stratagem, but we've got command points to spare and we're gonna be using a lot of command points. Gene Steel Occult are still a very command point hungry army. We can only generate one of these per turn, that's the cap, but having two command points in your own turn and one in the enemy turn is better than just having one in each. By being on a home objective, they're very tough to shift unless you're going to put a lot of firepower into them because we can regenerate using that cult icon. If they are destroyed from long range firepower, things like basilisks, a lot of mortar squads or other anti-infantry long range indirect fire shooting, well, we can just return in the same spot as a blip. We'd miss one turn of generating command points and holding that objective, but the turn afterwards, we're right back where we were before. The enemy has inconvenienced us not defeated us. And if you really didn't want that particular inconvenience of missing a turn holding the objective, as you know, victory points win games, then being one with the darkness just stops all of that anti-infantry, long range, indirect fire from even targeting you in the first place. I suppose now you're thinking while watching on your phone or your computer, how? How do I show my appreciation for your content? Well, you can like, comment, and subscribe. That's it! Oh, it's so simple! Why didn't I think of that? How else? I also have a Kofi linked in the description. 
there's a one-off tip jar, or you can provide monthly support if you so wish. And thank you to the many people who have already done that. It means I can get the good bread extra soft. So there are several ways to use the Gene Stealer Cult neophytes. Having a lot of board control and being really tough to shift come naturally to the neophyte hybrids, and they're everywhere as soon as you take more than a couple of units of them. For 2,000 points, yeah, I would have about four units. Maybe the full six, but four units. Three squads of 10 to hold different objectives around the battlefield, and a squad of 20 to pop up and blow things away. At 1,000 points, one squad of 10 to hold the home objective and generate command points, and a squad of 20 to pop up with a Nexus and blow away enemy infantry that are on objectives or that you really don't like. Infernus Marines still can't touch them, but other units like Stern Guard, Chaos Chosen, whole platoons of Imperial Guardsmen. These are the kind of high cost at a thousand point units that we can just be wiping away. Yes, the Guardsmen will come back because they're more sneaky and infiltrate -y than the Gene Stealer cult are, but then we can just use Return to the Shadows and hit the same unit again. And while you may want a Primus to do a lot of extra damage, they're better with Acolytes, explained here. And if you are holding that home objective, I suppose you can have a Clamavus. Take your pick and have a great day of 40k.